immediately when Adam and Eve sinned, God says, stop. You will no longer be able to rule this earth. The earth will rule on you now. You will be a slave to your environment. You will be a slave to the nature. You will have to work like very hard in order to gain anything from this earth. You have no more control. The environment will have full control over you. Is man in charge of the environment? No. The environment controls man. And therefore, man can no longer rule. He kicked them out of the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden, symbolically, by them being kicked out of the Garden, God was saying, you're no longer worthy. You no longer have my permission to represent me, to manifest, and to show the creation that you are my governor, because you have gone in a different direction. So man immediately lost the kingly ability. No longer man was in uh, control and was not representing God. The second thing that they lost is the priestly ability. They were no longer able to please God. How do we know that? Where is the verse for that? Well, if you read chapter 4, now we're moving into chapter 4. In chapter 4, Adam and Eve already are kicked out of the garden. So the kingly ability is gone. No longer they can rule. In chapter 4, you see the story of Cain and Abel. And the story of Cain and Abel is a very interesting story. It's not just there for two brothers who fight with each other. Here you see that one brother offers a sacrifice that is pleasing to God. And one brother offers a sacrifice that is not pleasing to God. In other words, one of them still recognizes that the way to please God is by the way of the blood. So he brings the fat of sacrificed animals to present it to God. And by the way, fat in the Bible is a sign of the surrender of our soul life. Because all the sacrifices in the Old Testament, not only they had to shed the blood, they also had to burn the fat on the altar. The blood shedding refer showed the, the blood sacrifice of Christ, and the fat burning showed the total surrender of all to God, and it represented the entirety of man, which is really the soul of man, being placed on the altar. So Abel remembers, maybe Adam, his father, had told him, Abel, when we sinned, God sacrificed an animal, he clothed us with it, and he shed blood. That's the only way God and us, we can have any relationship. So as these two sons grew, Abel went back and offered a sacrifice of blood and fat. God said, I am pleased with you. You still are trying to please my heart. I accept that from you. What did Cain do? Cain went and he did agriculture. He planted seeds. He made a big harvest. And I personally believe Cain brought the very best of the harvest that he could for God, and God says, no, I will not accept that offering from you. Why? Because in chapter 3, just the one chapter before that, God cursed the earth. He said, this earth is cursed. And if you look at the verse, he, he showed, it, it, he is, the verse is... Uh, the verse 17 says, Adam said, Be, uh, because of you, because you have listened to the voice of your wife, you have eaten of the tree I have commanded you, you shall not eat. Cursed is the ground because of you. So Cain is trying to produce something good out of something that is cursed. And God categorically rejects it. Here we come to a very interesting fork in the path of human history. Two ways are open for us. The way of Abel, the way of Cain. All the religions in the world, all the philosophies in the world, all the human psychology, all the human efforts, morality, and everything else that you can, can in your mind think is the way of Cain. Because man is trying to use his own abilities in his own way, in his own thinking, to please God at best. And God says, no. Because there is absolutely no element of blood in it. It's a bloodless sacrifice. 
It's a bloodless religion. It's a bloodless psychology. It's a bloodless morality. And God says, no. The only way that you can approach me, the only way that you can please my heart, is by shedding of blood. And Abel stands as the first example of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ himself, that blood had to be shed. And therefore God was pleased and he accepted the sacrifice of Abel. So you see two main veins of thought and behavior starting from right in the book of Genesis. The way of Christ, the way of all other ways of religions and psychology and morality and everything else. And these two brothers will always be in opposition. There will never be friendship between Cain and Abel. As a matter of fact, Cain is always an Abel killer. Cain will always kill Abel. Every time there's an Abel, Cain will kill him. Every time there is a, a Jesus Christ or a follower of Jesus Christ or a mention of Jesus Christ, religion will kill it. Other philosophers will kill it because there is a hatred deep in the heart of Cain for Abel. Why? Because God was not pleased with the way Cain was trying to approach. And who is behind Cain? Here's the, in the story that really the game is beginning. Who is behind Cain? Well, I believe that Satan, out of Garden of Eden, had to pick some way of destroying the promised seed. Let's not forget, in verse 15 of chapter 3, God promised Eve that from her seed, the one will come who will crush the head of the serpent, meaning the kingdom of Satan will be finished through this one person. So Satan hears it. Satan says, aha, there will be one of the children of this couple who is going to destroy me. I'm not going to let that happen. And in the oriental culture, meaning the culture of that time, the first son is always the heir to all the uh, inheritance, the throne, everything. But God knew that Satan is going to go after the older son. So he bypasses Cain and passes on the seed to Abel. That's why Cain ends up killing Abel because he realizes that this boy is carrying the seed. He has offered a pleasing sacrifice. So the God and Abel are in a good terms with each other. And God is going to use Abel. So Cain kills Abel. So the priestly or the pleasing of, the God, of God's heart, here we see a deterioration of it slowly. Only one son pleases, the other one doesn't. And as you read through the book of Genesis, slowly the people lose the ability to please God. You will see that after this, absolutely there is no more mention of anybody trying to please God. It will go so many generations until we come to a person by the name of Enoch. Enoch says, walk with God for 365 years, and he was taken. Why? Because he says he pleased God. Nobody else. Out of the whole human population of that time, there was only one person who was looking for a way to please God. And nobody else. Finally, God, uh, finally mankind lost the prophetic ability. In other words, it came to a point that man could no longer hear God's voice. The first time that God speaks to Sam after this is in chapter 6 of Genesis when he speaks to Noah. No more talking between God and humanity because they can't hear anymore. Their ears are shut. They cannot hear it. So the third disaster that happens, slowly the ears are gone. First, the will is gone. Next, the heart is gone. Finally, the ears are gone. Man is no longer able to do God's will no longer able to please God, and no longer able to even hear what God has to say. Totally in darkness. Now, very interesting, in the Old Testament, God always had three individuals to govern the nation of Israel. There was always a king, there was always a priest, there was always a prophet in the people of God. 